So let's have a little chat about tunes on the engine. So we're talking about the ECU, the electronic control unit, the electronic computer unit. Most manufacturers have got different names for this computer that's inside the engine, controlling all the aspects of the engine. And here in the UK and in a lot of Europe, we refer to this process as remapping. So within the ECU, you essentially have a map, a table, a chart, and that chart or table or map allows the engine to determine what to do in order to get the power that you actually need, depending on your throttle, your engine RPM and the speed the car is traveling at. There's a big difference between diesel engines and conventional fuels such as gasoline or petrol, depending on where you live. They've also got different names. So we do try to be inclusive here and include everyone. <laughs> In a diesel engine, the ECU is controlling the amount of fuel that is injected into the engine and also the duration, the start point when the fuel is injected and the end point. So by controlling that, you have a big degree over the amount of power that the engine makes. And depending on where your foot is on the throttle, the RPM speed of the engine and the speed you're actually traveling at and the prevailing conditions, the temperature of the air going into the engine, they all have a bearing on the amount of fuel and the duration of the fuel being injected. So by altering that map, inside the computer, you can make fairly substantial power gains and completely change the way the power is delivered. And in a modern turbo diesel engine, that ECU or the computer inside the engine is also controlling the turbo boost by means of an N75 valve, which allows control over the wastegate, which is the flow of the exhaust gases through the turbo. So by limiting the amount of exhaust gases in the turbo, you're restricting the boost. And by opening that up wide, you can increase the boost. So obviously in conditions where you're just driving along with no throttle, you don't need lots of boost. You don't need to be burning lots of fuel. But if you want to accelerate hard and you've got your foot flat on the throttle and the engine is already at a fairly high RPM level, you really do need to ramp up the boost and ramp up the fuel accordingly. So just by altering those parameters inside the computer, you can make a big difference to the way that the power is actually delivered. Manufacturers themselves tend to build in quite a wide margin for error. The quality of the fuel used has a big bearing on the way that the fuel burns and how efficient it is inside the engine. So manufacturers take into account that some countries have very low quality fuels and others often have a choice of premium fuels or lower quality fuels. The prevailing atmospheric conditions, the temperatures that cars operate in, all have a big bearing. So manufacturers have basically come up with a map or a table within the computer that allows the car to perform well in all of these different environments and setups. So when you take your car in and have it reprogrammed, remapped, flashed, whatever you want to call it, you're limiting that amount of flexibility the engine has and you're really dialing it down to suit your local needs. And also as a, a driver of a car, you want to keep your car in good condition. So you don't have to build in the margin for error for bad maintenance that manufacturers build into their generic maps. So it's far more complex than just dumping more fuel into the engine. A lot of companies out there that just offer a budget service to alter the program within the computer are essentially just dumping more fuel in. Now that that may potentially make more power. You're burning more fuel after all, but it often produces a lot more soot. So you can get devices that plug into the OBD2 port and allow you to change parameters within the ECU itself. You can take it to a remapper who will download the map off your car, make the necessary changes to it, and then re-upload it to your car. Or you can get the car set up on a rolling road where they can dynamically monitor the engine, see exactly what's going on at different load conditions at different RPM levels, and really optimize that map. So the rolling road is usually the best option for your car. It releases all the power. And if you've done other mods, it's hard to take those into account when you've got an off the shelf map, the sort of map that's better than the manufacturer's map, but still not fully optimized for everything else that you've done to your car. There's also tuning boxes that you can get, little piggyback modules. Now there's a lot of really cheap, ghastly units out there. You can have problems with your DPF filters and the engine's life is probably going to suffer as a result of some of those. So make sure it is a decent tuning box. It's got a microprocessor inside. And the, the easiest way of telling a cheap, 
tuning box from a better quality one is the number of connectors. So a cheap one will typically just connect to the fuel system. So there will be just one connection on it. But the more complex ones have two or more different connections to interface with other systems on the car and fully optimize it. And it will basically act as a, a mini ECU. It will lie to your car's ECU about the sensor readings that are coming in and it may even adjust some of the outputs from the ECU to various components in the car perhaps to drive the fuel system harder to change the timing of the fuel delivery to change the boost profile on the turbo there's lots of things that it can take into account just to fully maximize the amount of power that you get from your engine so that finer control that you get with a modern diesel engine with the injectors that are very very precisely controlled particularly on the CR type engine setups as opposed to the older PD version. So particularly with the more modern diesel engines, those with a common rail setup and very flexible injectors that allow a lot more control over the duration and the spray patterns to some extent as well. You can do a lot more to fine tune the power delivery and get the maximum response from the engine. So bear in mind that your piston is moving up and down. So generally when it's at the uppermost point, the maximum amount of compression has gone on with that air that's inside. And that's really the point you want the fuel to start igniting. So in order to get that fuel igniting at that point, you need to inject it slightly before. So you can actually see it's quite a complex area. It's certainly not something we're gonna go into in this video, but you need to work out how many degrees before that top dead center point is optimum to get the amount of fuel into the engine itself in order to burn and deliver the power when you want it the most. Firing that fuel in too early can obviously have problems. If it starts to burn too early, you may well be pushing against a piston that's going up, which would be to the detriment of power and may actually be damaging the engine. So the computer inside the engine is certainly not something you can just jump into and start fiddling around with the parameters yourself. You do need to understand the complexities of what's going on in a modern turbo diesel engine in order to extract more power. And different manufacturers have slightly different setups with the engines. They work to slightly different parameters. So it really does pay to choose someone with an expertise and knowledge in your particular engine, rather than going to these companies that just offer a generic service for all different types of engine out there. So I hope this video has been interesting to you. It's given you a little insight into the world of engine tuning and what goes on in inside the computer, particularly with regard to diesel engines. We're going to do another of these videos for gasoline or petrol powered engines as well, because the slight difference with those is that you have a much tighter ratio of air to fuel mixture. And also it's the spark that initiates the burn. So timing that spark precisely can have a big bearing on the way the power's delivered. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button. It really helps us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We would love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.